So in this video, we're going to look at the SV Boney SV305 astronomy camera. This is a color camera with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, so full HD. It uses an IMX290 sensor, which is the same as the one in the ZWO290MC. We'll compare the prices between these two cameras shortly. Looking inside the box, the camera itself appears nicely made. It is metal with a USB-B socket on the back. It comes with a cover, a number of adapters. This is a 1.25 inch adapter which will fit into any standard telescope replacing the eyepiece. Another adapter and it also has the appropriate cable for connecting to a laptop and this camera is compatible with most of the astronomy software that I use SharpCap and PHD2 for guiding. It comes with a cleaning cloth and the drivers although I downloaded the drivers directly from the SV Boney website which I'll place a link to in the description below. So here is the camera on the SV Boney website and this is where you can download the latest drivers also. As you can see, it retails for $142.99 US. After having used the camera for two weeks, I think this represents excellent value for money. Comparing it to the ZWO290MC camera, which retails for $299 and you can sometimes get that for $249 on sale, the SV Boney camera is about $100 less for effectively the same camera. So with astronomy, you could spend tens of thousands of dollars and you will no doubt get some good results. However, the point of this video is to show you that you don't need to outlay that amount. And with a camera like this and a modest telescope, you can still obtain some very impressive photographs. If we look further down on this page, we see a nice shot of the moon. So I decided to see if I could replicate that with a very basic telescope. And I'm happy to say it was very easy. That is a photograph taken of the moon with the SV305 camera and a 130 millimeter Newtonian telescope. And there it is again. As you can see, the detail and the color definition is excellent. So the telescope I used for those images is this one, a Skywatcher 130mm reflector. For $599 Australian, you can buy this telescope with the ASGTE mount. This is a computerized go-to mount that works extremely well. For an extra $100, you can purchase this wedge, which will convert the mount to equatorial mode. For $700 Australian, you have a telescope on an equatorial mount. So here is the actual telescope with the camera already fitted. As you can see, it is a reflector design. Now the camera is designed to just replace the eyepiece. Once you attach the adapter, it fits straight into the telescope and you use the standard focusing mechanism to get the image in focus. This same camera could also be used on my Skywatcher ED72. Now you will need some adapters to position the camera further out, but the exact same thing is required for any of the ZWO cameras. So please excuse the mess. I'm packing up the room today as we have a flight tomorrow. And I've also been out doing some gift shopping for the family. But here is the telescope with the camera fitted. It is currently focused on that distant building on an antenna on the roof. This is what it looks like. And what I'll show you now is how easy it is to operate this camera through the SharpCap astronomy software. So this is my Windows based laptop that I use for astronomy. And the program we'll be looking at is SharpCap. There is a free version, but for 12 pounds a year, SharpCap Pro gives you a lot more features. 
When we fire up the software, because the camera is already connected, it will be detected by SharpCap. If we go to the cameras menu, we can see the SV Boney SV305 right here. Now it's getting dark outside, so I have to increase the exposure value slightly. But as you can see, we are still looking at that same antenna. So I have intentionally waited until it got dark outside to show you the power of these astronomy cameras. With the daylight settings in the software, we can't see anything. Let's see what happens when we increase the gain and the exposure values. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase the gain to a value of 250. And now I will increase the exposure to about three seconds. And you can see, even though it is dark outside, the camera is resolving that antenna nicely. So this software lets us adjust a number of other parameters, or we can just do an auto white balance adjustment. We can choose the resolution and when you lower the resolution it has the same effect as zooming in. You have a narrower field of view for a given telescope. Going back to the native resolution 1920 by 1080 we then have this histogram stretch, which has an auto mode, or resetting it back to default. And at this point, we can select the type of file we want the photograph to be presented in, a PNG, a FITS, JPEG, or a TIFF file, and we just start the capture up here. So it is now taking one frame approximately every three seconds. And you can see that down here. And this camera also works nicely in guiding software such as PHD2. There you can see the latest update has an update for the SV Boney cameras. I'll do that later. So overall, I really have nothing but praise for this camera. For the price, I don't think you can beat it. Now I happen to know that Hugh Jars has recently purchased an equatorial mount and a nice telescope. So I'm going to surprise him by donating this camera to his astronomy kit. I'll pack it up tomorrow and ship it off to him. And I look forward to seeing some of the results of his work on this channel. So the brand SV Boney is also available on Amazon and eBay. I recently ordered one of their guide scopes. This model here, the 50mm guide scope, for $99 including free shipping, I think that represents excellent value. Here is the unit and I plan to fit that to the new telescope I purchased in Perth. Thanks for watching and once again I hope some of this information is helpful if you're considering getting into astronomy yourself.